What's up, y'all? Um, I hadn't been on here in a minute. Shout out to IG, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're looking at this at. What's up? Um, so today I'm gonna talk about distractions, but I have had like y'all. My heart was a little heavy when I before I hopped on here. Um because we had well my family, my cousins. Um we had a, de a couple of deaths in the family unfortunately. I just got wind that a couple of my cousins died in a car car crash. So sad. Um I'm not on the family bereavement team and there's a reason guys. Uh my mom was like get him some get him words of encouragement. I was like is there anything you can really say to somebody who just lost a two? There is not. Hey, Forch. Miss you, Forch. <laughs> um, what was I? Okay, so what's funny about this title tonight is that I got completely distracted <laughs> last week. I was supposed to give y'all this last week and I got distracted. Okay, that's why distractions are so dangerous. All right, let's hop in. Uh, I don't want to think about having lost a couple of cousins tonight, and um, but y'all need to hear this, okay? I will not let death or anything distract me right now, okay? I definitely got distracted an entire week from giving y'all this. Um, so I feel like I am a professional at this topic. I could probably talk all day about it. I have been a, in my past, I have been a professional distraction for some people. Um, I have been a professional at being distracted, right? That's why this, what I got to say is a week late, got distracted, all right? Um, <laughs> uh, so, anywho, um, Tell y'all a little story about distractions, okay? I probably, I got like a million stories, right, uh, about distractions. But when you think of it in terms of, let's say sports, right? When you think of it in terms of sports, there is what you call like in football, right? You got a, a run pass option. You, or let's just say you got a, a fake a fake run and they pass it. Well, the distraction in the backfield is for the defense to come down on, on the runner, right? It's for your linebackers to come into the box and make it look like a really good run play and then boom, hit you with a slant, you know, for the uh, wide receiver to replace the linebacker. Something like that, right? I'm not getting technical, but you get it, right? The off, the, the, the offense, your opponent is always going to run distractions, Right. And your life is no different. The only problem with this is that unlike in lot in 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 um, unlike in sports, in life, the distraction is actually deadly. Right. So we look at distractions and we joke about having like the attention span of a carrot <laughs> or the attention span of a five year old, which is this. Right. You got to keep kids. Trust me. I just hung out with. I spent about a, two weeks with two five-year-olds, guys, just me and them hanging out. And their attention spans were just like, dur, 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 dur. right? Uh, but unfortunately, uh, man, in life, people get so distracted and it costs them. It costs them their lives sometimes, you know, it costs, it, it unfortunately costs a lot of people their destinies when they get distracted. So... You know, it, uh, think about the enemy, right? If he can't kill you, if he can't get you to kill yourself, he wants to kill your destiny. A lot of times he won't. He a lot of times he he wants y'all to be alive just to see your destiny go down the toilet. Okay, and how does he do this? A lot of times he does it with distractions. Trust me, he has successfully in the past. He has successfully distracted me a few times. More times than I want to get into right now, okay? I mean, whether it be with a career path, um, a lot of times that's how 
a lot of us get distracted. A lot of us get distracted with drugs, sex, money, um, terrible decisions that were just meant to get you, veer you off the path. But you know what I'm saying? God got a lot to say about distractions and about staying, staying focused, right? So I did a kind of deep dive in what distraction meant. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to talk about it tonight. You feel me? So let's hop in, right? So the word distraction or to distract means to turn aside, to divert, to stir up or confuse with conflicting emotions or motives, right? So of course, when I get something like this, I always, I turn, I open the Bible first. And by open the Bible, I mean, I open my Bible app. Yes. Let me show y'all. My good old blue letter Bible app. It's actually blue. I know this is black and white, but that screen blue and white. Anywho, right? So distractions. A lot of times it's hard for people to think. They got cloudy judgment. They get confused about this or that. Um, it's just it's distractions, guys. Right? Like you supposed to be going this way and you looking that way. Right. A lot of times you hear and I've heard and when I read the Bible, don't turn to the left nor the right. Just keep going. Right. So. I look over at like first Kings 13. Right. It's talking about it was talking about the man of God who was on an assignment um, that he almost completed. Unfortunately, some people get distracted from ever going to the assignment. And unfortunately, some people get distracted during the assignment and they never complete it. That's probably arguably worse, right? Because if you don't go to the assignment, you can just turn around and, you know what I'm saying? Go there, complete it. Uh, but anywho, so I was scouring the Bible for distraction for people who got distracted but overcame. Um, and I looked at, I remember one of my good friends, her favorite, one of her favorite stories in the Bible among many is the young prophet and the old, the man of God and the old prophet, right? So that's in first Kings 13. And um, it's about the man of God had an assignment. Let me just go. Right. I ain't gonna read the whole thing. But you know what I'm saying? What I say first Kings 13. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But you know what I'm saying? Let me just go. So basically, God told this man to give a word to the king. He said, you know, don't eat, don't drink, get a word to the king, right? So he gave the word to the king. It wasn't a good word. The king rent his clothes, you know what I'm saying? They were so dramatic back then. Like, all I think about is this, like, oh, right? <laughs> anyway, they were very dramatic back then, guys. Um, so he said to the king, let me see. What did he say to the king? So he told the king what God said, right? It wasn't good. It was not good at all. All right. So check the first part of the time is complete. God said, go do this. Don't don't eat with them. Don't drink with them. Don't do nothing. Just go straight back home. So the king is like, hey, come sit down. And he was like, no, nah, I can't. I can't drink bread. I can't eat water. I got to go. He said in verse nine, he said, for so was it charged me by the word of the Lord saying, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn the game by the same way that thou comest." So God told him to go give the word. Don't eat. Don't eat with the king. Don't drink with the king. Matter of fact, when you leave, leave out a different way. So my boy, he followed me. He gave the word. He didn't eat with the king. He didn't drink with the king. And he went a different way when he came out. Right. Almost there. Or as, or as my Spanish brother say, ya casi. Almost. Right. So he went another way and he returned. He didn't go the way he came. Right. So we go to verse 11. And this is where the, dun, dun, dun. If this was a movie, it'd be like, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So verse 11 says, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the work that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father and their father said unto them, what way went he? Like, what way did he go? 
for his sons had seen that what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. Right. So the dad is like, yo, OK, where he go? Which way he go? The sons told him. So, of course, he rolled up on this 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 man of God. So he said to him, so the old prophet was like, hey, come home with me. Come home with me and eat bread. And 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 just like, you know, being obedient, he was the man of God was like, I can't I, I may not enter with thee nor go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. I, I can't do none of that, sir. God said, no, I'm listening. So so he tells the old prophet, for it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. Right? So, you know what I'm saying? The old prophet's like, I'm going to get this little dude to drink. First of all, why did he even want to distract this guy like this? Right? You could say it was maybe jealousy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he heard, you know, you know God using this young man. And God used to use me in the same way. And we ain't here no more. You know what I'm saying? He probably had some David Saul stuff going on. I don't know. Anyway, who cares? All we care about is getting. All we care about is not getting distracted. Okay. So. Then, you know, the old man pulled rank on him. He said, I am a, the old prophet says, I am a prophet. Also, is that art? He's like, me and you, we both prophets, right? And so then he tells this this young man, and, and an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring me, bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Okay, this is what y'all need to be very careful about, right? Some distractions will be will come and it'll look like the right thing to do. It'll sound like the right thing to do. It may even feel like the right thing to do. But that's why you got to judge everything by the spirit. You got to, guys. You got to. Because this could be life or death for you or life or death to your destiny. And if your destiny dead, you may as well just kaputs. Okay? Kaputs. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you can get delivered. Wake your destiny up through the power of Jesus Christ. Shout out to Jesus. Um, but until you do that, or if you don't know to do that and your destiny has been stolen, is dead, you just, you wander through life. You just a zombie. The walking dead. I ain't never seen this show. Anyway. Um, where are we? So he lied to the young man. Don't be believing what these people be out here saying just because they prophet evangelists dipped in the Holy Ghost waters field. You know what I'm saying? Walking on sunshine with Jesus. No, don't be believing people. You need to ask if you got Holy Spirit, you need to ask him. But instead of doing that, he went back with him. Mm -mm -mm. And he ate at the man's house. He drank at the man's house. And it, and then while, while he was sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet that lied to the man of God. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which of the which the Lord did say to eat to thee, eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers meaning your body you mean you ain't gonna make it home okay the sepulchers were like graves that uh forefathers bought to be buried in their families with their families right it's like uh your granddad or something about a plot a family plot in the cemetery that sort of thing but so the word of the lord said you ain't gonna make it home basically told the young the young man the young prophet you're going to die Right, you gonna die, unfortunately. So then here we go. It came to pass after he had he ate, he drunk, he saddled his ass, and he he you know what I'm saying he got on he he got on down. First of all, if I knew that guy was like, yo, you been disobedient, you ain't gonna make it home, your body gonna be I wouldn't have left. I'd be like, you know what, they're gonna have to come get me. They're gonna have to come get me. <laughs> He really should have hit his knees and repented. You know what I'm saying? God's so merciful, y'all. He is very merciful. But anyway, on his way home, the word of the Lord did not return void. And it cannot 
God don't be lying. On his way home, the boy got mauled by a lion. He didn't, he, he, the lion killed him. Matter of fact, what's crazy is that the lion didn't eat him. The lion just killed him and stood there. Long story short, because he got distracted, it cost him his life, right? You don't, you never, I don't, we don't know what God had planned because he did get a king, the word of the Lord. He didn't eat or drink with the king, but he went and ate and drank with this old prophet that lied to him. You feel me? He got distracted. Unfortunately, uh, this distraction cost him his life. Distractions get you over to disobedience. I'm telling you. What else? Distractions are sent by the enemy to destroy destiny. It's not just being able to unfocus. It is a spirit of confusion sent to deter you from doing that which God has commanded you to do. Guys, distractions are dangerous. If you don't think this young prophet getting mauled by this freaking lion is a warning to us to stay focused on the things that we've been called to do. I don't know how to help you. Right. And for us, you know, it's not as it might not be as dramatic as being mauled by a freaking lion. But little by little, if it's the distraction here, a distraction there, these things add up. Right. You look up. A year down, two years, five years, 10 years down the road, and you are nowhere near where you're supposed to be. And then you look back and you see these relationships. Uh, you see this amazing career path that you thought was going to pan out. You see these businesses, this get rich quick stuff that they were all distractions that just added up to where you are and where you see yourself. And now you sitting here in the funk thinking like, how did I get here? But if you go back and retrace your steps these steps you were taking were just distractions. These people in your lives were sent by your life was sent by the enemy to distract you. That's the purpose, right? To steal, kill and destroy. He one of his weapons he uses is distractions. I'm helping you tonight or today, this morning, whenever you're watching this. I'm helping you, okay? Um 1 Corinthians 7:34 that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction without anxiety, without care. That's, that's what that word distraction means, right? So we see distraction causes anxiety and care. We look at 1 Peter 5, 7. We look at Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Write them down, guys. Study that. Um, and distraction also means to turn aside, right? It is the word um, sewer, Meaning to go away, to turn aside, to depart from God, depart from the law, reject, put aside, cause to be undone or soot, meaning to, to swerve, to fall away. Right. When you think of these words, the, the word that stuck out to me was like reject, like, yo. It, when I think of reject, it's like, yo, you rejecting God. When you think of it like that, like like the almighty God, the one true and living God, the God that if he just so much has thought about it, could take the breath out your body. That God, right? Uh, heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. And the clouds that we can't even reach are just the dust of his feet, guys. That God. So when you think about distractions really causing you to reject God, to turn aside from God, to reject everything God got going on, to swerve out of the out of the path that God got for you uh to fall away from the path that he he has created you to be on you will stop taking distractions lightly right it's one thing to get distracted from uh let's say something so small as you know schoolwork right I, for example i'm supposed to be grading final exams i have thought about everything in the book to not grade these exams right like Sometimes we go and look for distractions. We seek distractions out. I am guilty of it. And Father, I repent for seeking distractions out. I come out of agreement and I renounce distractions. Lord, I say that I am focused on everything that you have called me to do. Repent, renounce and replace. Amen. So distractions are serious. Um, 
to turn aside. So we look at Deuteronomy 31, 29. I'm throwing these out there, y'all. Write them down. If I could spell Deuteronomy, guys. <laughs> Deuteronomy 31, 29. For I know that after... Let me see. He said, for you know that after his death, this is Moses talking to them. He said, for he knows that after his death, that they will corrupt themselves and turn aside from the way which he had commanded them. And evil will befall them in the latter days because they will do evil in the sight of the Lord and provoke him to anger through the work of their hands. My God, they will get distracted. So one thing that God will always, was always getting the, the children of Israel on is... For one, being disobedient and idolatry. What caused that is that they would get distracted with the idols in the in the land. They would get distracted with, oh, I want, I need this, I need that, as opposed to keeping their eyes on the promised land, which the God of all the universe, God Almighty, He had done all these amazing things. They still got distracted, and they ended up in the wilderness for forty freaking years. Apparently, the journey from Egypt to the promised land should have been i think 30 days at the most how do you turn a 30 plus a 30 some let's say a month or two right how you turn one month two month journey into 40 years 40 distractions you distracted by hunger by thirst by your need to 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 see other gods by these other gods in this land they just distracted we also see in uh deuteronomy 532 ye shall observe to do as the lord your god hath commanded you ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left hand or if we looking in the camera to the right hand or to the left hand okay uh deuteronomy eleven sixteen. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Just like I said, they got deceived and they got distracted, right? Distraction is deception, guys. This is very serious, right? Um, Deuteronomy eleven twenty eight and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside distraction, get distracted out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods, which ye have not known distractions, levy curses, right? You get distracted from what God called you to do. You start getting over the disobedience. Curses, disobedient people are cursed people. They get curses. Run back now. Repent now. Or you start getting over and, and you worshiping other gods. And I'm not talking about like yoga and Islam and all that. I'm talking about like something so small as like watching Netflix. When you know you should be reading or praying or giving a word or whatever. I'm preaching to myself. Or Psalms 40 and 4, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside or fall away to lies, right? Distractions are lies, liar, 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 liar. Distractions are liars, right? Psalms 101, 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Glory to God. That should be your. That should be your uh, declaration. Psalm 125, 5. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Right. So those who turn aside unto their crooked ways. The Lord is going to lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, right? Whatever they get, those people that get distracted, to turn aside, to fall away, they're getting the same thing. Whatever the, the wicked get. But but those that can stay focused, you know what I'm saying? God gives them peace, right? So let's recap on distractions, right? Distractions, what do they do? Like they're not just some little cute things like, oh, I got distracted from schoolwork. No, these things are deadly, Distractions are deadly, guys. Distractions are deadly, right? Distractions 
deceive you. They lie to you. Distractions cause curses to be levied on you. Um, what else? There's that three. This, the distractions are deceitful. Distractions lie. That's kind of the same. Distractions cause curses to be curses to be levied on you. Um, distractions cause you to get what the wicked get. I hate the work of them that turn aside, right? And distractions destroy destinies. Distractions destroy destiny. D, D, D. Distractions destroy destinies. That is the most important thing that you should remember. Okay? Distractions destroy destiny. Distract. Say it with me. Distractions destroy destiny. I will not be distracted. I will stay focused on the things that I should be doing. I will stay focused on the things that God has commanded me to do. Even the small things, the things you think are small, right? Look at these great bodies we have. They are made up with billions of cells, cells you can't see unless you put under a microscope, right? What happens when one of those cells gets all out of whack? The whole body gets out of whack because it can become cancerous, right? So don't think that something is just so small that it can't have an effect on the whole because it does. And that's what distractions do. They come, they look like they're small. They may come in a form of entertainment. They may come in a form of, of an opportunity to get some money. They may come in a form of a boy or a girl that you like. Maybe a man or woman you think you want to marry. Distractions. Why do distractions come? Long story short, they serve a lot of purposes, but the main purpose is to destroy your destiny. So stay focused. Don't get distracted. Preserve yourself. Preserve your bloodline. Preserve your destiny, guys. Okay? That's all I got tonight. This I was supposed to get y'all this last week. But I got distracted. <laughs> All right, folks. See y'all tomorrow. Love you to life. I'm out. Peace.